Now, the place in Indiana to learn more is right here at the Atterbury Bacaller Air Museum out near the Columbus Airport. Thanks, Gordon, for having us here today. Now, the museum is celebrating its 25th anniversary. Tell us a little bit about the mission of this place. Well, the mission of the museum is to preserve the history of the former air base and the people who served here. And the time period that it covers is from 1942 through 1970 when the base closed and the wing moved to Grissom Air Force Base up by Kokomo. Now the museum that we're standing in now is kind of one part of a, um, sort of a larger complex here. Take us through what people can expect when they come here. Well, uh, we outgrew our original home, so we had to have more space. So three years ago, we doubled the size of the museum and tripled the size of the display area. And our history starts pretty well at the front door as you come in. It shows the land as it was before it was an air base all the way through until when the base closed in 1970, highlighting uh, a major things that happened in World War II is, for instance, the Tuskegee Airmen were here, flew B-25 bombers off the base. Glider pilots were here and they flew uh, gliders like there's a nose off of a World War II glider. And then after World War II, it went into a sleep mode for a couple years and then it reopened as an Air Force Reserve Training Center for the rest of its life. And the 434th Troop Carrier Wing was here, which the same unit is now the uh, 434th refueling wing at Grissom Air Force Base. So the history still goes on up at Grissom now. Why do you think it's important to preserve the history of this time and this place in Indiana's history? Well, this 2,000 acre airport holds a lot of history and people would not learn that the Tuskegee Airmen were here and wouldn't learn that the gunship guys were activated from here and sent to Vietnam. And learning about the people who served here and how much the landowners gave up. You know, they came here, handed the landowners a receipt for their property and said, this is how much we'll pay you. You have 30 days to get off. And they did that here and they did it at Camp Atterbury, the 40,000 acre army post. So there's a lot of history here and a lot of remembrance of people who visit us. They're either their fathers or they did or their grandfathers and grandmothers served here. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the highlights in this museum? The highlights, uh, we have some local display items. During World War II, a lot of the companies pretty well shut down and went to building war materials. For, for instance, we have a Navy generator built in World War II by Cummins here. And then we have other displays that show that then Arvin Industries or Nobla Sparks, they shut down and started building radios, gas cans, bomb casings. So all that went on here in Columbus. And today we still get people who say, my mom worked there, she was a spray painter, you know, the Rosie the Riveters. So we still get people to comment about that. Now, Gordon, one of the incredible parts of this museum is sort of the, the blood, sweat, and tears that you guys have put into it, building everything by hand. Tell us more about that. Well, this museum, we're lucky. Our volunteers, we've got engineers, designers, tool and die workers, woodworkers, and everything in this museum we have designed and built ourselves. So there's years worth of work, uh, and we have one-of-a-kind large-scale models that were built by hand from the plans and some of them up to 15 foot wingspans, but they represent aircraft that were either stationed here or of that era. So we have a lot of hardworking guys that are still sawing and painting and designing today on, on the museum artifacts and displays. That's wonderful. Well, this place is just an incredible snapshot of a time and a place in Indiana's history. Gordon, thank you so much for giving us a peek at it.